Welcome back grade four to your natural science lesson for today. I am very excited to be working with you again and I hope you are all well. So I'm going to start today's lesson once again by reminding you of the worksheetcloud.com email address should you have any questions or about this lesson or any of the lessons that you have received whether they be natural science, English or maths. And for you guys, that is grade four at worksheetcloud.com. Now, yesterday we learned about how the uh, different states of matter change and how they, we called it changing of states. Um, so today we're just going to quickly start our lesson by recapping that and seeing if you can remember what you learned yesterday. So what happens to water when you freeze it? Nice and simple you get ice. So what is ice? Ice is a solid. And hopefully you can all remember that the temperature of which water freezes, but not all liquids freeze, is zero degrees Celsius. So that is freezing when you're turning a liquid into a solid by cooling it. Okay, so what happens if you hold that ice cube now in your hand? That's right, it would start to melt. Melt and melting is the process in which the solid form reverts back to a liquid through heating. What happens if you were to boil that liquid water now, put it in the kettle, other than making a nice cup of tea, you would see evaporation occurring. When you boil the liquid, turns into a gas and it happens very rapidly um, through heating and therefore it uh, you see water vapor. Um, so just a reminder there, the water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, but not all liquids boil at the same temperature. And can you remember which of these is a solid, a liquid or a gas? Nice and simple. We have the ice cubes being solid the water, or the melting ice cubes in this picture, representing water, which is a liquid, and the kettle represents the water vapour and the steam, which are gas. And that brings us on nicely to our next topic today, which is the water cycle. Now you may have looked at the water cycle before or even realised what's going on outside around you and figured it out and researched it yourself. But let's look at the water cycle now in a little bit more detail and see if you can relate it to the things you learned yesterday about the changes of state of water. So what is the water cycle? Well, the water cycle is the name that scientists have given to describe the process in which water moves its way around our planet. The water cycle has two other names that I've written for you below, the hydrological cycle or the H2O cycle. Both words refer to water. Hydro is water and you may have learnt in um, Energy and Change Unit of Science last year or even this year that hydropower is power generated from water. So the word hydro means water. So how does water move in a cycle? Well, as with every science lesson, there's terminology that you need to know in order to explain it. And you can take these words, these four words, the top two you should have added to your dictionary yesterday, and you can include the bottom two today. So the water cycle has four main parts, and these are the steps in which the water goes through in its moving around the earth. And those steps are evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and accumulation. Now, sometimes accumulation is also called collection, but either way, there's a lots of shun words for us to learn today. Now, if you couldn't join me for yesterday's lesson, or you haven't had a chance to go back and look at it yet, you won't know what evaporation is. But for those of you who are there, you should be able to recognize this term. Evaporation is the process in which water is heated to form a gas. 
And in the water cycle, unlike boiling, where that happens very quickly, at high temperatures, evaporation can happen quite slowly. So bodies of water like lakes, rivers, streams, puddles, and even the ocean becomes heated by the sun, and it forms water vapor that rises into the air. You might have seen evaporation if you've ever boiled the kettle. This water heats up and the steam rises off from the water. And I used the example yesterday of having a nice hot cup of tea and you blowing on it and seeing the steam rise up. Now condensation, quite simply put, is the opposite of evaporation. Condensation happens when the water vapor in the air becomes cold again. When vapor gets cold, it turns itself back into a liquid form and this is what makes clouds. Now the image I have here for you is a good example. If you're boiling the kettle and you hold a nice cold plate or something over it, you'll find that you get water droplets back that drop into a cup. Now I wouldn't suggest you do this unless you're in a science lab or with your parents, but it is a good way of demonstrating condensation in action. Now, yesterday I reminded you of other ways to see condensation around your house, maybe on your window on a very cold morning or in, when you're getting something um, cold out of the fridge and leaving it in the room for a little while, you'll see getting droplets of water on the outside of that object. So that's condensation and evaporation, but what is precipitation? Well, precipitation happens when water that is up in the sky gets released so the clouds in this case release um, water and depending on the temperature depends on what's released. So if it's very, very cold, it could come down as a solid in the form of sleet or snow. But if it is not that cold, it will come down as a liquid form as rain. And finally, the last term we need to use when we look at the water cycle is accumulation. So accumulation is when water um, gathers together or collects in one place to form a body of water like a lake or a river or a stream. So do you think you know what happens after that water has accumulated? Have a little think. Well done if you got it right because what happens is I started the cycle with bodies of water and I've ended with bodies of water. So once the water is accumulated, it heats up by the sun and evaporates and the cycle starts again. Now here I have a very simple diagram to demonstrate the water cycle in action. So I have a large body of water, in this case, the ocean or sea being heated by the sun rays. And that means that it starts to evaporate. A liquid turning into a gas is evaporation. In this case, water turns into the gas water vapor and rises into the air where it forms clouds of condensation. So clouds, the water is condensed and those clouds would then travel being pushed by the wind inland um, closer to the shore where because it's closer inland, it is warmer and those clouds then start to precipitate. Now it could come down, remember precipitation it refers to anything that falls from the sky and forms of water, so it could be snow, sleet, hail or rain. Once it comes down, it then must collect and that is accumulation. And that accumulation can be in the form of rivers and streams in this case, it could also be ground or sometimes called surface runoff. And then also, please don't forget that you have underground water too. Many of you may even have a borehole in your garden or somewhere near you, um, underground rivers and streams in Cape Town. We have many that come, um, un underground rivers that come underneath Table Mountain. And all of those will eventually land their way back into the ocean and then the cycle proceeds to happen again and again and again. 
And I thought I would give you some fun facts about water. One of the ones that my children in my class love to hear is the fact that the water you drink from your tap today or any day is the same water that's been around since the Jurassic period, which is when the dinosaurs walked the earth. Because it is continually recycled in the water cycle, there's no such thing as really new water. So I always tell my children in class, enjoy it, you're drinking dinosaur wee. <laughs> At some point, a dinosaur will have drunk that water that you are currently drinking. That's pretty cool, I think. The sun is exceptionally important in the water cycle, as is the wind. But remember, the sun is necessary. If there's no sun, there's no evaporation. Now, it doesn't need to be a hugely sunny day for evaporation to happen. But the hotter the day, the quicker it occurs. And lastly, and I find this absolutely incredible, only 2.5% of the world's water is actually drinkable. It's fresh water. And that means that we have to be very careful and we should not waste water. Now, if you are um, in one of the regions of South Africa that has been struggling with drought in recent years, you'll know that we've been particularly careful uh, with our water supply and how much we use and how we use it. So please take care of the precious resources of our country and make sure that you um, use fresh water wisely because there's only a limited amount of it on our earth. So that's it for today's lesson, a very quick whistle stop tour of the water cycle. So remember if you haven't done so already to start that scientific dictionary and today you can add the following four terms, evaporation, condensation, precipitation and accumulation, the shuns of the water cycle. Um, I would like to remind you that I'll be here tomorrow. Um, we've wrapped up now our work on changes of states so over the last three lessons. We've revised the three states of matter being solid, liquids and gases and their properties. We have looked at how those states change through processes such as boiling, freezing, evaporation and condensation. And now we have looked at the water cycle being how water moves through those changes of state in our natural world. So tomorrow we'll continue on with looking at different materials and their matter. I hope you have enjoyed your lesson with me today. Stay safe, stay healthy and stay indoors, please. Um, and remember that you can get a worksheet activity Based on this lesson, I've taken the, the picture of the water cycle that I used for you and I'd like you to please label it and give it a nice colour for me. It is saved on the website for you to do this afternoon or whenever you finish this lesson. Okay, have a lovely day and I'll speak and I'll see you tomorrow.